Hi, I'm Jim Vendewald. I'm with Phantom Knowledge. I produce training for the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, the Phantom 3, and the Inspire 1. And right here in front of me is a Phantom 3 standard. I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing with this standard, and I'm going to compare the standard to the other versions of the Phantom 3. So I just want you to kind of get an idea of the differences between uh, the standard and the 4K, the professional, and the advanced. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a little knife on the tabs. Um, I like to keep everything nice and clean. And then that way, when it comes time to sell, I'm going to have the box. And the box is going to be in, in good condition. I keep everything in good condition, keep all of the manuals and everything so that um, I get a better price when it comes time to, to sell, whether it's on eBay or Craigslist. Uh, people just appreciate it that they kind of get a feel that if you're taking good care of the box, then maybe you're taking good care of the equipment as well. All right, so this is what it looks like with the box open. And uh, this is the manual, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And inside here, you can see that there's um, various stickers, you, replacement stickers for, you know, in the front of the, of the Phantom. And then also there's different little booklets. So we've got the quick start guide, which is very important and then also intelligent flight battery uh, make sure and take the time to actually read through this this is important information and safety uh, guidelines and disclaimer um, also take the time to read through that also online at dji.com you'll find that there is a manual for each of the uh, the different phantoms it's in pdf format take the time to download that Okay, so this is an egg crate uh, kind of a case that's coming off here. Make sure and um, keep that in good condition. And then this is the Phantom itself. Now, one of the things that um, I want to talk about is that when the Phantom 3 first came out, it was a big deal because the, it was huge. The difference between the Phantom 2 Vision Plus and the Phantom 3 was a huge, huge up, upgrade. What they did is they borrowed, DJI borrowed the technology that they had in the Inspire 1 and brought it into the Phantom 3. And so when the, the Inspire 1 actually came out before the Phantom 3 did, and so uh, the Phantom, the Inspire 1 cost like $2,700, and that's before, you know, any additional any additional batteries or any other accessories. So um, that was a chunk of money. And the Phantom 3 Professional, with the Professional you get a 4K camera and you also get the uh, Lightbridge technology. And so with Lightbridge, you know, you have, this is a uh, Inspire One controller with a mini, it's an iPad mini. Um, this is a mini too. And you can see that it has a wire that connects from the controller into the mobile device. Well, that's one of the distinctives between this unit and the, the Phantom 3. So here you have all this technology that was, that was designed for the Inspire 1, and then they made it available in the Phantom, in the Phantom 3 professional, especially the professional. So you have this, uh, now the controller, this is actually the Inspire 1 controller. The controller for the Phantom 3 professional is, has a little bit of a plastic top. The bracket actually is a little bit different. Again, um, with the Inspire 1, they had a better bracket. So I always advise people to go to like B&H Photo and purchase the better bracket because the Phantom 3 bracket um, just wiggled, you know, especially by the time you got something a little bit bigger in terms of a mobile device on there, it was just always wiggling and coming loose. So to me, it was just kind of a flaw. So uh, this is what I want to get into here is so we're going to now look at the Phantom 3 standard. And one of the differences is inside the standard is 
actually it's the, the camera. I have to take off the gimbal lock here. Inside the camera here is a, a mini USB card. And this is an eight gigabyte mini USB card. And all of the other Phantoms, including the Inspire, have a 16 gigabyte mini USB uh, gigabyte card. So here's the box for the charger, and you're gonna see that this particular charger is a 50 watt charger. Now, uh, this is a USB cable and the power cable for the charger. And then this is the charger itself, and it is a 50 watt charger. So in the 4K Phantom 3 and in the advanced Phantom 3, it's a 57 watt uh, charger. And then in the professional, it's a 100 watt charger. So you just have to keep that in mind. The reason that's important is that, number one, if, if you have both a standard and you have the advanced, you don't want to use the same the same cable. Each charger is uh, unique to the Phantom. But another factor is like with the Professional, it's a 100 watt charger and so it's going to charge up your battery much faster. So that there's a significant difference there. Another box here is just the little, these little accessories, the, um, the wrench that's designed for helping to tighten up the the propellers and take off the propeller. I actually don't even use the, don't even use the wrench. But um, I go into all these things. I, I take a step-by-step -step approach in my training so that my customers they're going to know exactly what to do from the very beginning. How to get things set up in terms of the batteries, the firmware setup, uh, getting the software installed. And when it comes to the standard, one of the really big differences is the fact that it's a Wi-Fi connection. So here is the controller for the standard, and you can see that it has um, this older style controller. This is the same style controller that was used in the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. There's nothing wrong with it, per se. It's just that it's not advanced as the professional or the advanced. So. Um, with the advanced and the professional, you have a controller like this. Actually, you also have the same controller with the 4K. And so um, it's only in the standard that you have this type of controller. So what are the differences? Well, one is the return to home button. Uh, you don't have that on the Phantom standard. There is no return to home button. You have to use the switch here, and these are the switch switches get designated for different things, one of which is return to home. So I'll be talking about that in my training. Uh, other things that, that this type of controller has, is it has these programmable buttons underneath the controller. This type of controller does not have those programmable buttons. It does have these switches. These switches are somewhat programmable. And so again, I'll be, I'll be getting into that. So, uh, so you can begin to see, get an idea of some of the differences between the standard and the other models. So going back to the standard, one of the things that's different is it does not have the indoor vision positioning system that you would find with the advanced and the professional. So it's, uh, it's missing that, and so that makes it a little bit lighter, which then means that you have a two extra minutes of flying time, at least theoretical minutes of flying time, and so that's a, that's a positive, but you can't fly it indoors. Another difference in the standard uh, compared to the other models is with this model, with the camera, you cannot take the lens cover off, um, which means there is no threads and you can't put a filter, you can't put any filters on. So with the, with the 4K and with the advanced and with the professional, you can use filters. So there'd be like a UV filter, which helps to protect the lens. Now this does have a UV filter on it, so you're okay there, but you can't do any other kinds of filters like, like a polarizing filter, which helps 
for uh, minimizing glare and making the horizons and your colors more vivid, or an ND filter, call, also called a, a neutral density filter, which actually helps to bring down the light. And so on a real sunny day, your shutter speed doesn't have to be so high. Generally speaking, when you're shooting video, you want your shutter speed to be about double of what your um, frame rate is. So on a sunny day, the ND filter is very handy because it means that you don't have to have such a fast shutter speed, which then enables the video to look a little bit better. Okay, well another difference is that the maximum distance for the standard is about a half of a mile, whereas with a with the Phantom 3 uh, Advanced and the Professional, on the box it says you can go 1.25 miles, but people are talking about going two and three miles in distance, um, and there's like extenders and stuff, so um, it just, yeah, it gets to be kind of crazy, but definitely you're not going to have the same kind of range with the standard as you would with the professional or with the advanced. Um, now the 4K is going to give you the 4K video, so the difference between the, the 4K camera and the advanced, now the advanced doesn't have a 4K camera, so if you're really concerned about the camera, then you either have to go with the 4K, which is going to make use of the Wi-Fi ex extension, or you would have um, the professional, which will give you um, the better controller, which also enables you to have the larger screen, a larger mobile device, and it gives you 4K. So uh, another factor there. Now, also keep in mind that there really is a big difference when it comes to this type of controller versus this type of controller. It's not just a matter of distance. It's also a matter of clarity, clarity of what, what you're seeing on the screen. So with this, you're, you're using Wi-Fi as a connection. It's wireless. And with this, you can see it's wired. There's a wire coming from the controller to your mobile device. And it's in high definition. It's 720p. So you're able to see uh, at much greater lengths out there it's much more accurate as far as visually being able to see what the camera sees from the aircraft. And that makes a difference when it comes to safety. There's one uh, large business online that has decided to not sell the, any more of the Phantom standards because they are concerned about the, well, the whole issue of of clarity of screen and and security and so they say well they could actually result in more crashes I think it's really uh, debatable I think that people who are buying the standard you know hopefully you're not going to be t testing the limits to see how absolutely how far it will go and how high it will go but you're using it as a tool to help you enjoy your vacations and get great great video and, and that sort of thing. At $500, I mean, this is an amazing, an amazing unit. Um, this is a better unit than the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. When it sold, my first Phantom 2 Vision Plus was like $1,350, or something like that. And when, even with this, when it first came out, it was $799, and then it became $699, and now it's all the way down to $499. So I don't know if it's going to stay at that price, but we're now looking at a $500 uh, flying aircraft uh, from DJI. And so that's very impressive. It's just that you have to keep in mind, you have to understand what some of these differences are. So another difference to keep in mind is that with the standard and with the advanced, the camera is 2.7K. Whereas with the 4K and with the advanced, you have a 4K camera. Now, 2.7K is way better than the Phantom 2 Vision Plus, which had 1080p. And I strongly recommended people fly or shoot at 720p, 60 frames per second, because you get better video that way. That's with the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. So it turns out that there's a huge disadvantage between 
uh, with the standard and with the 4K, when it comes to GPS stabilization, you're only you're limited to GPS stabilization. In contrast, the advanced and the professional, uh, these units are able to use the Russian Glasnost satellite system, and this satellite system means that your your Phantom then has more satellites available to it. It means that there's more stabilization when it comes to flying and it's also faster as far as as far as connecting. It's more accurate. And so this is a big issue and it's and that's another reason that this other company has decided to not sell the standards and the 4Ks because um, they strongly recommend that people have access to this Russian satellite system, which provides uh, greater stabilization. With this particular controller, uh, it's kind of, the bracket here is kind of loose right now. I would tighten that up. And again, all these things I go through, I'm gonna be going through in my training as far as the switches, uh, turning it on, what what do these things mean? What's, what's the all these sounds for? How to set up the firmware? Um, how to work with the Wi-Fi and get get all of that working and the little nuances related to uh, your mobile device and getting it connected with the receiver and um, tips to help you so that you, you know what you're doing when you first get started and it's all in a systematic step-by-step -step fashion. Even something so simple as putting on the the gimbal lock it can be very confusing but i demonstrate how the gimbal lock goes on so that you don't have any trouble doing it so hopefully you um, this video has helped you understand some of the differences between the standard and the other units for five hundred dollars it's an introductory product it work uh, i think that it's uh, huge this is really going to be huge in terms of the the number of people getting into quadcopters. Here you have this, this flying aircraft and for $500 today, uh, who knows what it will be in a year from now. And uh, it just means more and more people are going to be buying these things and having access to them. And uh, we want you to be safe. So make sure and check out phantomknowledge.com check out uh, the training that we offer. It's very inexpensive. You can get started for $20 or go a whole year for $48. So uh, I strongly recommend it. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.